Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. So there's been a lot of progress in the world of AI, which we've been exploring here at Jenny Prep the last couple of months, specifically how students can use these new tools to supercharge their studying for the FE exam. Now, I would like to introduce you guys to Trevor, the technical lead at Jenny Prep, and today he's going to give you some tips on using AI to help you prepare for the FE exam. Now, Trevor, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, of course, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Can you introduce yourself to the community? Sure. Like Kenza said, I'm the tech lead here at Genie Prep. If you've ever had a problem with the website, it was probably me. I started off as a mechanical engineer and later got my master's in computer science. This puts me in a good position to explore and understand AI and how it applies to the field of engineering. Now, I know I'm not Kenza, so I hope you bear with me. I'm sure you're going to do great, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it, Trevor. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get started. Now, there's a lot of different ways we can talk about incorporating ChatGPT into studying for the FE exam, but I'm going to start with the foundations, the study habits that are good to have when beginning your FE journey. I'm going to start off by introducing ChatGPT and talk about some of the technologies that underpin it. Then we're going to look at five different use cases. We're going to break down the FE exam into manageable bite-sized chunks, start to estimate how long it's going to take us, we're going to generate a study plan together that looks at all of the different stuff going on in your life and build something that works for you. We're going to see how we can prime our brain by building mind maps before we even start studying. We're going to build some flashcards so that we can do retrieval practice so that when the exam actually comes, it's going to be fresh in our mind and we can pull it up at a moment's notice. And then we're going to see how we can brush up our, our fundamentals. Of course, we have to talk about some of the challenges of using ChatGPT and the drawbacks, and then I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a teaser. Let's start by talking about the technology behind ChatGPT. That way, as you use the tool, you get a good sense of what's possible and what's not, what's likely to be truthful and what's likely to be false. First off, ChatGPT is a form of generative AI, which is a artificial intelligence that focuses on creating or generating new content or data. In the case of ChatGPT, it's obviously focused on creating text, but there's other types of artificial intelligences that can generate images such as Midjourney or Dolly. Now, the important concept behind ChatGPT is something known as large language models, or LLM for short. An LLM is a deep neural network with multiple hidden layers that takes in an input, in our case text, and over those multiple hidden layers, transforms it into a useful response. Of course, the exact implementation is not important to us, and we're going to treat this system as a black box. Here we have a diagram that shows the process by which LLMs create new text. We have an initial phrase, the best thing about AI is its ability to. We feed that into the LLM, and we ask it to complete the sentence. In this case, it comes back and says, learn is the most likely next word. We add that to the existing phrase, the best thing about AI is its ability to learn. And again, we feed it into the LLM and ask it to complete the sentence. We do this over and over again until we have a response that we're satisfied with. As we saw in the previous diagram, fundamentally what an LLM doing is adding one word at a time. It's always trying to produce a reasonable continuation of the input text, where reasonable means what one might expect after reading billions of words of text from the internet. Notice that this doesn't say accurate continuation. In fact, an LLM makes no guarantee about the accuracy of the text that it says. Reasonable sounding doesn't need to be true. Now, keep that in mind because an LLM will confidently lie to your face and it will sound reasonably correct because that's all it's guaranteed to do. All right, with that out of the way, we can start talking about actually using ChatGPT. ChatGPT is offered by OpenAI, and when you sign up for one of their plans, you will be presented with a screen very much like this. In all of our demonstrations, we're going to be using the latest ChatGPT4. No matter what FE discipline you'll be taking, the FE exam can feel very overwhelming at first. Let's see some ways that we can use ChatGPT to break it down to more manageable bite-sized chunks. All right, here we are on the ChatGPT main interface. I've gone ahead and uploaded the FE mechanical specifications, and I'm about to ask it how long it's going to take me to study for this, if I'm a new graduate. 
Let's see if it takes into consideration this information. All right, so here's the answer that it came back with. Starts off with a little background information on what we can expect from the exam, and then it dives into how long it's going to take us. Of course, it takes into account that we're a new graduate. We're probably familiar with some of these topics, and it suggests three to four months because we know these topics already. Other students might need more time. This is actually right in line with what most people will suggest. So already we're off to a good start. Let's not stop there though. We've already uploaded the specification. So let's ask some more questions about it. Let's say I'm unfamiliar with section 13, measurements, instrumentations, and controls. For whatever reason, let's say I skipped in school and I'm not entirely sure what they mean by this dynamic system response. Well, we can always go and ask for an explanation from ChatGPT. All right, let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT about it. And then let's also ask about what kind of problems we can expect to see on the FE exam regarding dynamic system response. Of course, I like bullet points more than I do blocks of text, so let's also ask for that. And nice, it's given me a brief explanation in simple terms about what it is, and then it's kind of telling me what kind of problems that I can expect regarding this. Great, I hope that's given you a couple ideas about how you can talk to the specifications and get more familiar about what you're gonna see on the exam and get a better understanding of some of the topics that you're unsure about. Of course, you could skip this step entirely and take the guesswork out of the FE exam by checking out our comprehensive courses on both the civil and mechanical disciplines. Our civil is complete and fully up to date and our mechanical we just launched early access to the afternoon section. Check it out now while it still has an early access discount. For our next use case, we're gonna see how we can use mind maps generated by ChatGPT to prime our brain before we even begin studying. That means we'll be much more receptive to learning the important concepts that we need to know. We're gonna use the same section as before, measurements, instrumentation, and controls. We're going to see how the mind map that we're going to generate is going to be useful to us in our study journey. All right, back at ChatGPT. First thing to notice is that I've enabled a ChatGPT plugin called AI Diagrams. This is what's going to generate the mind map for us. My prompt is I'm studying for the FE exam. I want you to generate a mind map that expands on the following topics, focusing on what's important to know for the FE. And then I've pasted in that section from the specifications. And here's what it's came back with. It's broken down each of those sections, sensors, introducers, control systems, dynamic system responses, and it's added more subtopics that I probably should know as I go through it. The specification is deliberately vague. So having something like this that kind of gives you a roadmap of exactly what you need to study is super helpful. And of course, if you want to go even deeper than this, you can. Let's say I want to branch out on that control systems further. And as requested, it's gone even deeper into control systems. And you can see how I could arbitrarily apply this to whatever topic on the FE exam I want to really understand how all of this stuff is interconnected. Having a good study schedule is key to passing the FE exam. I'm going to show you how to use a custom GPT that we've built to create your own. Here we are at our custom GPT called Genie Time Block. It's gonna help us create a study schedule. You can access it by using the link down below in the description. I start off by feeding in a prompt of wanting to create a study schedule and I list out some of my commitments and we're gonna work with it and craft our schedule. All right, let's come back with an answer. So first off, it lists out some of my commitments in an easy digestible way. Then it starts to propose an example routine and you can see it's interactive because it's asking me different questions about where I wanna place certain stuff. So I'm gonna think about these things, and I'm gonna answer it. Okay, great, so it's come back with our finalized schedule. Starts off with it in a simple list format. If we go down a little bit, we can see right here there's a markdown table. I wanted it a little bit more colorful, so I asked for it with emojis. Now this might not look like much at first, but I'm gonna show you a little trick to convert this into a PDF that you can print and have it look great. All right, first I'm gonna start off by copying this code right here. Then I'm gonna go over to Google and I'm gonna search for Dillinger IO. I'm gonna click on that first link. I'm gonna go on this left-hand side where we have our raw markdown. I'm gonna control A, delete it all. I'm going to paste in my table. 
And I'm going to go, I'm going to click Preview As. I'm going to click Styled HTML. And boom, now I have a very stylish table. I can go right click and click Print. Choose Save as PDF. I want it in Landscape. There we go. Now I have a PDF that I can save and print and mark up and do what I want with and edit it. As you probably know from the many, many videos of Kenza giving the same exact advice, it is so important to practice. Practicing active recall in simulated conditions ensures that when the day of the actual test arrives, you'll be ready. Of course, one of the best ways to practice is with practice exams, which you should take several throughout your FE journey. But another way you can practice active recall is using flashcards. And would you believe it if I told you that ChatGPT is great at generating these flashcards? All right, back at ChatGPT, we're using the plain ChatGPT with no plugins or custom GPTs. I fed it a prompt asking for 10 different flashcards on our measurements, instrumentation, and control section. I told it how I wanted it formatted. I said, focus on conceptual questions. It generated the 10 questions just like I asked, and it's done it in this table. Now I can go ahead and either print this and then cut it out and then tape it back in front, or I would actually recommend getting flashcards and writing it out by hand. Remember earlier, I said there's no guarantee that this is going to be 100% correct. So you need to make sure that you're checking this and making sure that it's all correct. But another way that you can kind of circumvent this and actually um, help it along is tell it to double check its work. So here I've said double check your work, briefly explain all your reasoning. It's gone through and it's given me more of an explanation, so I'm more certain that it's actually correct. But again, still check. The final use case we're gonna look at is how we can use ChatGPT to address any shortcomings you have in your fundamentals. This is where you have misunderstandings or you didn't quite learn something about statics, geometry, whatever it is. We're gonna see how ChatGPT can help us build a better foundation. Back at ChatGPT, we've clicked on Explore GPTs and we're gonna see this Tutor Me by Khan Academy. I've asked it to generate me 10 practice problems related to trigonometry, specifically anything that might be related to statics. So it's gone ahead and generated the, the 10 different problems. Let's say I like this number five and I wanna work on it further. So I go over here, let's start on five, and then it tells me some information to get me started, and then it gently guides me to help me solve this. I hope the previous demonstrations prove useful to you in your studying but I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about some of the challenges and shortcomings that come along with using ChatGPT, mainly hallucinations. Remember earlier I said that there is no guarantee that what the LLM is producing is correct, only that it sounds reasonably correct. Case in point here, I asked it to generate some AI papers that involve energy. The first one is a real paper, but it's not by Sue at all. The second paper doesn't exist whatsoever, and yet, the LLM confidently lied to me. This is why it's important to never rely on it fully and to always check it. Now at this point, you might be asking yourself, is there a way to get ChatGPT more accurate? Can I ensure that what I'm reading is truthful? Now there's never a way to get it to 100%, but there is ways to get it much closer to the truth, usually by feeding in ground truths of data wouldn't it be great if you had access to a tutor that was always responsive, always on demand, but had the knowledge of, let's say, I don't know, Kenza? And I'll just leave it at that. Oh yeah, everybody now.